good morning children stay at home stay safe and healthy so i'm starting the next topic of the calorimetry chapter that is a calorie meter okay now what is a calorie meter calorie meter actually it is a it is a cylindrical copper vessel all right which is used to measure the amount of heat gained or lost by a body when it is mixed or when it is kept in thermal contact with another body that is calorie meter all right now what are the main parts of the calorie meter the most important part of the calorie meter is the copper vessel now here i am just showing you this is the copper vessel you follow the pen here this is the copper vessel all right this is the main part of the calorie meter now this copper vessel is kept in a double walled wooden jacket all right and within the copper and if you consider the copper vessel the outside and inner inside means the outer and inner surface of the vessel is polished why to stop the heat loss by radiation then in between the copper vessel and wooden jacket bad conductor of heat uh, heat are kept now you may keep wool also or you may one may use sawdust also so why this bad conductor of heat uh, uh, material which is a bad conductor of heat is kept between the copper and the wooden jacket just to stop the heat loss by conduction all right then here you see or uh, above the wooden jacket there is a sliding lid all right uh, when we will come to the school we will meet again then i'll take you to the physics lab and then i'll i can show you the calorie meter then you will see that above the wooden jacket there is a sliding wooden lid and on the wooden lid there are two holes from one hole the thermometer is suspended by a stand and clamp a thermometer is suspended by stand and clamp and through the another hole a stirrer is inserted within the copper vessel what is the use of the stirrer by you can stir up whatever mixture or whatever is kept within the copper container just to yeah means what i can say spread the heat uniformly and faster within the material kept within the copper vessel so these is this are the basic means i can say basic parts of a calorie meter and their functions so you see when i have described calorie meter i said calorie meter is made up of a thin sheet of copper now the question arises that why copper why not any other material all right and it's a very important question for your board exam also that's why i have put in up i have given the sorry i have given the marks here so that i have put the marks there so that you can learn and remember it. so why calorie meter is made up of copper the first point the first reason for that is copper is good conductor of heat so what will happen the moment you will keep any content or any body within the copper vessel then what will happen it will conduct the heat very fast and it will attain the temperature of the content very fast okay so this is the way you must write down the reason copper is a good conductor of heat this is the cause now whatever i have written within the bracket that part you may not write while writing the answer in board exam okay because in board exam only the key words and point uh, means point wise you have to write the answer so that's why this part i have kept within the bracket means why what is the cause copper is a good conductor of heat then if copper is a good conductor of heat what it will do it will attain the temperature of the content very fast or faster 
the next one is any good conductor and actually the second point it is related with the first point only you, you must remember you must keep this point also in mind any good conductor has low specific heat capacity all right so copper as it is a good conductor it has low specific heat capacity so what will happen we know that q is equal to m into c into t can you remember so you see if the specific heat capacity is low then what will happen q will also be low means what the copper vessel it will absorb less amount of heat from the contents kept within it all right so now what is the important question why calorimeter is made up of copper or sometimes you may get the question like this which material is used to make calorimeter and why then you have to answer this way calorimeter is made up of copper because copper first point copper is a good conductor of heat second point copper has low specific heat capacity now calorimeter it based on it works on the principle of calorimetry very very the most important topic of this chapter or concept wise also it is very critical what is the principle of calorimetry understand it first then i'll state the statement of the principle now when two bodies are kept in thermal contact two bodies means they are in different temperature so you may consider one as the hot body another is the cold body then what will happen you know the hot body heat will be transferred from the hot body to cold body and ultimately the and how long the heat will be transferred till the temperature of the two bodies become equal hot body initially temperature is high cold body initially temperature is low now when you are keeping them in thermal contact then what will happen the hot body will lose heat and the cold body will gain heat or other way i can say heat will be transferred from the hot body to cold body and how long heat will be transferred till temperature of the two bodies become equal so when the heat is transferred from the hot body to cold body then you can say that heat lost by the hot body is equal to heat gained by the cold body but here there is a restriction that only heat transfer is taking place between the hot body and cold body there is no exchange of heat between the system and the surroundings so when there is no exchange of heat between the system and the surroundings then the system we may call it as an isolated system okay so what is the principle of calorimetry that heat lost by hot body equal to heat gained by cold body when there is no exchange of heat between the system and the surroundings all right or you may write for an isolated system that's why both the option i have written you if you write when there is an there is no exchange of heat between the system and the surroundings then don't have to write for an isolated system all right those who are lazy for that lazy persons i have written the shortcut option you can write that heat lost by hot body equal to heat gained by cold body for an isolated system okay then this this is known as the principle of calorimetry now principle of calorimetry it is also known as principle of methods of mixtures all right now here the mixture is not the mixture you enjoy in the evening snacks okay that is not mixture means what mixture means it is you are mixing a hot body with the cold body all right a hot liquid with the cold substance cold solid like that so mixture does not mean the evening snacks mixture okay be careful so it is also known as principle of method of mixtures and in this case you see actually what is happening heat is uh, sorry energy it is getting transferred from one body to other are you creating the energy no are you destroying the energy no so what is actually done conservation of energy is obeyed so this principle of calorimetry it is based on law of conservation of energy and this is the frequently asked question you may get 
great means question on this topic and this is a frequently asked topic so everybody should learn and remember it now specific heat capacity of water it is very high all right what is the how, how much is the specific heat capacity of water 4.2 joule per gram per kelvin or 4200 joule per kg per kelvin all right now if you compare the specific heat of different substances you will find that specific heat capacity of water is very large all right and we can uh, means enjoy the consequences of speci high specific heat capacity of water in our day to day life okay now here i will discuss one by one the consequences or the natural phenomena that takes place due to high specific heat capacity of water the first one is uh, all of us know and in geography also you studied that climates near the seashore they are moderate all right near the seashore never you will feel very cold or very hot it is always uh, near the seashore always the climate is moderate neither too uh, cold or too hot okay now the question is why it is mainly due to the high specific heat capacity of water now if you compare the specific now first i will explain the entire thing and then uh, point wise how to write the answer because you know that in board exam always you have to write the answer point wise so i will tell you how to write point wise and now you know it is really a hectic job for me because when i take the real class then what i do i dictate point wise and you people write now i am suffering i have i have to write also anyway so first try to understand that why the uh, near the seashore climate is moderate so what i said the specific heat capacity of water is very high now if you compare the specific heat capacity of water and sand you will see that specific heat of capacity of water is five times bigger than specific heat capacity of sand all right so you see what will happen uh, means if you give if you provide the same amount of heat energy to water and sand okay then what will happen sand as its specific heat capacity is low it will become hot faster also and it will cool down also faster than water all right so you see due to this fact that specific heat capacity of water is bigger than specific heat capacity of sand sand gets heated or cooled down very fast com in compared to that of water if you compare it with water then sand becomes cold or hot very fast very rapidly okay as a result what happens when sand and water both of them are exposed to the same amount of solar energy same amount of sun exposure they are getting then what will happen sand first it will become during the day time what will happen sand will be hot and water will be comparatively less hot because sun uh, sand gets hotter more rapidly so you see what will happen when the sand is becoming hot then the uh, air the hot air it will move up and will create a partial vacuum here then what will happen cold air above the sea that that will run or rush towards the land forming the sea bridge during day time and during night time what will happen sand will cool down faster so during night time what is happening when the sun is exposure to sun is not there sand is cold and the sea water is hot so what will happen the air above sea water it will become hot lighter move up it will create a low pressure region then the cold air from the land it will rush towards the sea and forming the land bridge during the night time okay so this formation of sea bridge and land bridge makes the climate near the seashore moderate okay so this is the way point wise you can write down the answer of the question that why climate near the seashore is moderate so what is the first point you need to mention very important point examiner wants this 
that specific heat capacity of water is 5 times specific heat capacity of sand. Then as a result what happened? Sand gets heated or cooled more rapidly as compared to water under the same exposure to the sun. Then next point, as a result a large difference in temperature between the land and sea is produced which sets up convection air current and formation of sea bridge within bracket during day and land bridge during night takes place. And these bridges make the climate near the seashore moderate. Girls, please answer point wise as I wrote on the board. Next example of high specific heat capacity of water is hot water bottles are used for fermentation. Now what is fermentation? Unknowingly you always use that in your day to day life. You will see that whenever any pain or any kind of heart you are having then what we do we use the hot water bottle to provide the heat energy to the swollen part of the body. Okay and we reduce the swelling of that part okay so this one that by providing heat energy to a swelling uh, swollen part of a body the uh, reduction of swelling is known as the fermentation all right now the question is why hot water bottles are used why we do not use any other kind of thing because water is having high specific heat capacity so uh, you know the what is the formula for heat absorbed q is equal to mct so as C is high, Q is high. So what the water can do, water can store a large amount of energy within it. Not only that, water can release that heat slowly for a longer period of time to the swollen part of the body. Okay, so that's why hot water bottles are used for fermentation. Now what are the key words in the answered examiner ones? That is high specific heat capacity of water. This term should be there. So this is the way you must write down the answer. That due to high specific heat capacity of water, it can store, it can store a large amount of energy. And not only that, it can release the energy slowly for longer period of time. So that is the reason that why hot water bottles are used for fermentation. Now water is used as a effective coolant. You will see in the car radiator water is used when the engine or anything become very hot then just to cool down it faster what we do we pour water on it isn't it. So in the car radiator also water is used. Now the question is why water is and you know that uh, we are now miss, during the summer time also we use the water cooler at home isn't it. Now why the liquid water is taken as a coolant okay. Uh, what is the cause behind it? The cause is that water is having a very high specific heat capacity. So you see when it is having a very high specific heat capacity, it will be able to absorb a large amount of heat from the surroundings or from any body without much rise in its temperature. Alright. So what is happening when it can absorb a large amount of heat from another body then it will cool down that body from where it is absorbing the heat. So it, it may be used as a effective coolant. So how to tackle the answer in the exam? And what are the key words examiner wants? These are the thing that due to high specific heat capacity of water. If possible, underline it. Key words examiner want. It can absorb the large amount of heat. Just remember in the previous example when I said that hot water bottles are used as used for fermentation. Then I have not said it absorb. I, stay, I said it store and release. 
so you just observe how the keywords are changing in that case it was stored and release and in that in this case what you have to write it can absorb a large amount of heat from the surroundings without much rise in temperature water will not become very hot it will not go to its boiling point but it will be able to absorb a large amount of heat from the surroundings or from any body and thereby cooling down the surrounding or any other body okay now this is the way you must write down the answer in the exam in short and as i said if possible underline the keywords now next natural consequences of high specific heat capacity of water is that in cold countries you will see that the uh, the wine and juice bottle to avoid their freezing they are kept in water all right means water is used as a heat reservoir in cold countries for wine and juice bottles to avoid their freezing now the question is why again the same reason due to high specific heat capacity of water what will happen water can impart okay give out a large amount of energy to the surroundings before reaching to its freezing point all right freezing point of water you know 0 degree celsius so before reaching to the freezing point due to its high specific heat capacity of water it can release or impart or give out a large amount of energy to the surroundings and thereby it keep the surroundings warm so if you keep the wine and juice bottle within the water then what will happen water will release it and by taking that heat the wine and juice bottle will become warm and they will never freeze so this is the way you must write down the answer highlight the keywords due to high specific heat capacity of water it can impart impart a large amount of heat before reaching to its freezing point as a result bottles kept in water remain warm and do not freeze now the next consequence of high specific heat capacity of water is that farmers fill their fields with water to protect the crops from frost in cold countries what happens when the surrounding temperature falls below the 0 degree celsius then water present with the veins or the capillary of plants it uh, freezes and you know when water freezes water is converted into ice it expands so due to that what happens the capillaries of the plants it uh, or the veins of the plants they just simply burst and the plants die okay so what is the solution for that whenever there is a forecast of frosting then what the farmers do farmers the fill their field with water then when the farmers are filling the field with water then what is happening due to high specific heat capacity of water water releases a large amount of heat to the surroundings of the plant and thereby keep the surrounding areas of the plant warm and do not allow the temperature of the surrounding areas of plants to fall below 0 degree celsius and protect the crops okay so how to write the answer in short during exam this is the way due to high specific heat capacity of water it releases so underline the term releases a large amount of it to the surroundings and do not allow the temperature in the surrounding area of plants to fall below 0 degree celsius